So if you're interested in sitting with some folks and discussing that indigenous people history of the United States, please get in touch with Sonia. Very blessed one. I can't remember that email address. Very blessed and the number one at gmail.com. Got a visual on this one. I'm going to do commercial question. The Jan, can you, I'm going to jokingly call it the Jan Oswald Workshop. Tis not so. The UU Jazz, of, uh, you, you know, UU Jazz of Arizona is presenting Courage for Racial Justice, Courage for Liberation with one Chris Crass, and they're on a tour of Arizona. Monday the 24th, he's in Phoenix, 6.30 to 8 p.m. Wednesday on the 26th, he's here. And as we speak, that's live and in person. You should have received a way to register. Pat sent out a wonderful e-blast a couple days ago. If not, uujazz.org. Uujaz.org slash register. And you can join us there with a limited number of folks. I'll be getting a sign up of Aventure Report. And we're limiting that number. To it. So we will remain totally masked throughout the entire workshop and socially distanced in Jan's living room. And my hat off if I had one to you, Jan, for hosting us. Um, and later in Wednesday, they will be at Prescott. And all that goes when you go to see her on Zoom. And Thursday, the 27th, he is doing a special Zoom workshop for our call Knuckleheads. And I don't qualify. Chris is real clear. This is for white men only. <laughs> Chris said he wants his, he is a white guy. I want my brothers to come and listen to him. He talks about how to be an anti-racist anti as a white person in a Unitarian Universalist context. Funny little guy. But I like this guy. But check him out. Again, uujazz.org. And another note uh, earlier about, in that same vein, the term widening the circle, our theme for today. We actually are in the development stages of creating our internal group called Widening the Circle Champions, as of now. <laughs> and we uh, are in development, but I want to give you a heads up on what that will be setting out that we are uh, creating a film series and a workshop series around widening the circle. That means looking at LGBT issues and what I call GRACA. I just made that up, you know how to make stuff up. This acronyms G-R-A-C-A, -A, gender, race, age, class, and ability. So stay tuned for those. The first film which we will be showing is the film Disclosure. We ask you that it's on Netflix, so you have all of February to check it out and stay tuned for a date where we'll all get together on Zoom, chat about the flag. So stay tuned for that, just an early flag. And I'm joined by Barbara and Carolyn, and I'm happy to say also now Tanya and Paul have joined our cadre of folks. So we're looking to make some adult education and some discussion time beyond the pulpit for reality for us. Yeah? So thank you all for that.
A reading for us now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Reverend Susan Frederick Ray is the ninth president of the Unitarian Universalist Association. She was elected in June 2017 to a six year term after serving congregations in Fayetteville, Arizona, Youngstown, Ohio, and Nashville, Tennessee. She lives with her husband, the Reverend Brian Frederick Gray, and their son. Her words, the most profound theological gift I received from Universal, Unitarian Universalists is, is the belief in and the commitment to beloved community. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. described beloved community as one of unconditional love which seeks the fullest unfolding of the personality of every person. In the beloved community, racism, poverty, and discrimination would not be tolerated and would instead be replaced by an all-inclusive spirit of kinship. Yes. Thank you. So greetings and blessings, everyone. And again, good morning. I welcome you, as I always do, in the name of the people that you cannot see, that always accompany me, namely my ancestors. So I welcome you in the name on, of those folks and on whose shoulders I stand. And of course, I welcome you in the name of all that is holy and sacred for you. I, hope, I do consider it a pleasure and an honor to be in your face this morning as I do every time that occurs. It was in the same place that I heard the words that I'm about to share with you that continue to keep me going down this road. Because we do not ask what you believe. We do not expect you to think the way that we do. But we are you, you, and we ask. We ask that you try, try to live a kind and helpful life with the dignity proper to that of a human being. So welcome all. Welcome all. We welcome all. Believers, non-believers, as I like to say. Welcome all who believe that religion is wider, wider than any sect and deeper, deeper than any set of opinion, including my own. Welcome all who might find in this fellowship some strength, some encouragement for daily living. Because as we like to say, it don't mean a thing. <laughs> So today's talk is entitled Widening the Circle, which is a phrase and a name I kidnapped and borrowed out loud and on purpose from our Unitarian Universalist Association Commission on Institutional Change. On Institutional Change. It's a very involved report. You know, you use, don't mess around. We will do it in depth. <laughs> Let's be clear about that. So it is from that report that was delivered at the UUA General Assembly in June of 2020. And the report called for a sustained, they called it a sustained commitment to racial justice and the dismantling of white supremacy in our congregations and in our communities. Dear Jan so eloquently spoke of, and shared some words from our UUA president, Susan Frederick Gray, who I must say I had the pleasure to meet a few times over the years now. She continues to warm my heart. 
And in her reading, she said that this beloved community, racism and poverty, any kind of discrimination just is not happening, will not be tolerated. We don't play that. She don't talk like that, but that's all right. <laughs> we don't play that. We listen to a different kind of rhythm and music. Something to do about a phrase I heard something about Hey Heron or, or something like that. Oh. How many people? Oh, what, what? Every person. So yeah. And she reminds us that this is not an explanation of something. No. She offers that this is in fact the theological foundation of our commitment as Unitarian Universalists. Those are her words of phraseology. The commitment to what? An anti-racist, anti-oppressive, anti-sexist, multicultural, just and equitable society. That we always do it. We're committed to widening the circle. To include those marginalized by what I call rock. Uh, you know, y'all got that's the board in there. I just make stuff up. <laughs> but I try to be obvious about it and break it down. That's G-R-A-C-A. -A. I love acronyms, probably because it helps my memory. <laughs> Once again, gender, race, age, which we want to talk about that sometimes. Age, class, and ability. I'm always growing. This week I grow, grow with a new term that has to do with ableism and ability and how I look at that and how we look at that. And the phrase was neural diversity. That's what I said. Hmm. There is another way of thinking, of seeing, that may be of value to all of us, who we call people on the spectrum and or otherwise. I've been trained to think something wrong with them. One way to look at it, maybe they are neurodiverse. And there may actually be some value for me in how they see. So that's a place where all are not only welcome, but it's the key for me. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, you're also respected. And you recognize. We're still working on that judgment with the medical doctors in 1850, 43, whatever the year was. Or Elizabeth was by herself. Woman wanted to be a doctor. Girl, where are you from? Wrong. This circle is closed. You don't have a penis, you don't you can't get in this circle. And if you look like that, sure, you can a better shot. No, love that. That was the circle then. Elizabeth said, no, I want to be a doctor. So I feel that place, just perhaps it is, maybe it's not a real place, maybe it's a poetic place. Maybe I'm hoping, but I gotta hope. So you know what I do when I hope, I write a poem about it. <laughs> Go like this. The poem is entitled Zero, the place of no ego. Now we all went to school, I know you know that. We all know one plus one. Equals two. Well, I'm silly and I say no, that one day one plus one will equal zero. The place of no ego. That circle of grace, that round place, the source that paints a smile on a baby's face. Be it a black face, red face, white face, brown face, any face. One plus one will equal zero. Example. My nation plus your nation equals zero nation. 
My race plus your race equals zero race. My gender plus your gender equals zero gender. Wait a minute, I ain't got to hear you. Somebody said, I got to give up my stuff. No. This is not about subtraction. This ain't no takeaway act. This is about addition. A building on condition. I'm talking about addition. No scarcity. There is plenty. My history plus your history erases the mystery. My house plus your house. Why does it have to always be yours? Destroy that memo. My house plus your house equals the great house. Me plus you equals us. Us. You as. Hmm. Hmm. I think that a false hope or can all of America be the key? Close your eyes. Open your heart and look around. The creed of mine has said, I'm going to take a people, the inventors of the crown, going to steal them away and beat them down, raise them up slowly. Some people are going to call them clown. New name them, new cloak, new gown. And no matter where they live, no matter where they live, railroad track going to split the town. No matter where they live, railroad track going to split that town. Now, when the year used to be called a two with three zeros, there will come a voice. But calling only to those who understand the new man, based upon love and not wrath. You see, that's the gateway to the real path. The path of spirit. The path of the true hero. The path of those who overstand. Remember and teach that one day, one plus one plus one plus one. One plus one will equal zero. The place Here I say a place of the beloved community. Some of us, most of us may remember the story of the Good Samaritan. Mm -hmm. You know that story. Stopped for the beggar to buy the along the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Remember that story? That winding, dangerous road. Starts out at like 2,200 feet above sea level in Jerusalem by the time you wind your way down. I know this story because Martin Luther King spoke about this story in one of his speeches. And when you get down to Jericho, you're 2,200 feet below sea level. <coughs> so this morning I asked you, are you the good Samaritan who would uh, stop for the beggar? Am I? Would I really stop for the beggar along the way? Knowing there are robbers and beggars along life's highway. Especially those that I'm, here it comes, taught to despise and distrust because they're dangerous. So we ask ourselves, what would happen to me if I stop and help? What would happen to me if I stop and help? After all, as I said, it's dangerous out there. And beggars, those beggars are not too clean. He's probably faking his condition. So I offer that maybe, just maybe, I and you, we may be asking ourselves the wrong question. Not what will happen to me if I stop and help. Maybe the question is, what will happen to him if I do not? 
That's an old African proverb that pops in my head. It? it says, when you see a crow eating your neighbor's corn, you better chew it away. One day, the crow will be eating yours. Now, I think it's fair to say that we all want less robbers and beggars on our, on our highway of life. Yes? So the question comes up in my mind, what makes beggars and robbers in the first place? I ask, is there a need, is there a current calling to take a look at a new system? A call for a systemic change, a systemic restructuring, a time for a, what Martin Luther King called, a revolution in values. This week I read, I was going to say, I hope Suzanne Burke was here because I read the same, some of the same stuff she reads. And I know she saw it too. And of course, MSN and NBC probably covered it. I mean, she see it and covered it too. Who knows how much money the billionaires made so far during the pandemic? Anybody? A lot? Well, let's play. You know I like it, right? Let's play. <laughs> What do you, how do you think the billionaires are faring during the pandemic? Trillions. Trillions. How many? Two. Two. I got two trillions. Get a 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 three. Can I get four? Can I get four? Can I get four? Carol said four. Can I get four? Can I get five? Five. Rick said five. Rick, you are the winner. Five trillion dollars. According to Oxfam, that's the nature of our current road. That is the nature of our current path and place. A place, a system where privilege and pleasure and profit make people, make you secondary. Not that we ain't on the map. We just have to profit and pleasure. MLK said we cannot continue to ignore <laughs> ignoring a sober reality. This is a sobering reality. <laughs> Over the last two years, the COVID pandemic has made our good interdependence a reality that we can't run from no more. The virus don't discriminate. Spread quickly throughout all the communities all around the world. Reminding us that our, our lives are one of my first favorite words. Inextricably linked. We can run, but we can't hide. Yeah? What does that mean? I think it means we have a responsibility to each other. I have a responsibility to you. You have one to me. And when we allow greed and racism and exploitation or neglect to define our relationship, we'll let that define how you be with me. We'll let that define how I be with you. No, I ain't going out like that. We no, no. That's what lets the suffer. That's why suffering thrives. So you, you got it. Reverend Dr. Mark Morrison Reed put it this way. He said the central task of the religious community is to unveil the bonds that bind each to all. There is a connectedness, a relationship that is discovered amid the particulars of our own lives and the lives of others. Let me say that again. Through connectedness, amid the particulars, the bonds are discovered. 
Now once you feel that bond, it inspires us to act for justice. We know it don't mean a thing, but it got that strong. There's an inspiration that's built in. Again, our President Susan said, there are many of you who think that justice is our thing, but she calls it heart of our faith. She tends to disagree. She offers that no, our, um, her understanding is there is a connectedness that comes first. Our work for justice and equity, our work to dismantle white supremacy, culture, racism, and oppression, where is my demo in ourselves? Our work begins right here, as well as in our world. That, she says, is the faithful response to our theology of interdependence. We know that. What I, and I would say to our widening of us. The Zulu, the South African Zulu have a word for it. Anybody know what that word is? I know you do. Ubuntu. 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 I hear Desmond Tutu whispering from the other side of the bay. Tell him that to me. 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 Ubuntu is a Zulu word that means I am because you are. Can you try that on? I, there is no me without you. Wow. What a philosophy of life. I am, well, I'm an American. I am what I am. I'm like Papa. I am what I am, but I am what I am. <laughs> you better like it, or we got a problem. <laughs> so I can do that. I know that way very well. I'm trying to learn the other way. That's what the Zulu said. Ubuntu. I am because you are. And I believe that in times of tumult, times like these, it's more important than ever to realize that at the end of the day we belong to each other. A relationship of interdependence across the aisle. In this room. In this beautiful synagogue. Out in the mountains of Sodom. The most beautiful place on earth. Across the mountains and across the planet. Carolyn, Barbara, Tanya, Paul, may we champion, this is the word messing with them. may we champion the practices of humility, solidarity, compassion, and equity in fostering the beloved community in our culture, in our fellowship, in our tradition, and in our communities. And yes, in our world. May it be so. Bless you. Amen. Ashe. Join me in a moment of silence, please. You and I, we have been warmed by fires that we did not know. We have drank from springs and waters, water that we did not dig. So in gratitude of our many, many blessings, 
and in recognition of our need. This morning offering for this community will now be received. He has a tumor in his stomach. He has 
He's been a member of the family for 10 years and is a very good dog. So please keep Molly and Glenn and Taylor in your thoughts. Okay. Let's start one fine, let's start one fine thing if you would. For those joys and concerns, for whatever reason, would not express it. Build it. Turn his 
said, is it true back in the day, grandfather? I read about great, great, my great, great grandfather that they lived in a place where people got jobs and were just, you know, oh, he used to have to, is that true? You used to have to check off a box on forms that you were either gay, lesbian, black, white, and great, great, great father. I don't understand the hypocrisy, but they said that it didn't matter. But you had to check the box. Is it true? I don't know, that's such a foreign thing for me. So I do the work for seven generations down to point of make like my now my old brother and sister do. Seven generations. I might never see it, but you're gonna drop that pebble in the water today <laughs> that that roof will go where it needs to go. Yeah? So in that same Navajo vein, we will paraphrase the way they do their thing about beauty. But I'm going to insert the word widening instead of beauty. Because I see widening in front of me. I see widening that circle behind me. I see it over there on the left of me. I can see it on the right of me. I see that widening of the circle above me, and I can feel it in the Mother Earth. Widening, widening the circle below me. So I offer you that gift, and may we go in peace until we are together again. Send you in love and light. May it be so. Oh, you're getting large. Come on. Okay.